Welcome to The Countdown, the show that counts down the five coolest things happening in space right now. In this episode, Curiosity's music playlist, radiation storm probes, and friggin' maser beams. But first... Five! Wouldn't it be cool if we could teleport from one place to another? Sorry, we don't have a special effects budget on this show. But teleportation is possible. The catch is that physicists can only teleport a single photon of light. And now there's a race to see who can teleport that photon the farthest. A group of Chinese physicists recently beamed a photon across Chenghai Lake, a distance of 60 miles. And around the same time, European and Canadian scientists teleported a photon almost 90 miles across the Canary Islands. We know teleportation best from the TV show Star Trek. You gather information about an object in one location, then beam it to another location where you can create an exact replica. Quantum teleportation, the real deal, makes use of a principle called entanglement to send information almost instantly. But don't think you'll be beaming around planets like William T. Kirk anytime soon. Teleporting a single photon is a long ways away from teleporting trillions of molecules we're made of. Four. What music do Martian robots like to wake up to? A. Rock. B. Rap. Or C. Show tunes. Unless we're talking about Disney's garbage collecting robot Wally, my money's on D. None of the above. That hasn't stopped NASA engineers from firing up some tunes to awaken the Mars Curiosity rover. Some notable hits on NASA's playlists include Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries. The theme from Mission Impossible, Got the Time by Anthrax, and Frank Sinatra's Come Fly With Me. The practice of wake-up tunes started with space shuttle astronauts and has continued with NASA robots. One NASA engineer writes about Curiosity, she tends to be less cranky with a good wake-up song. What kind of morning music would you play for the Curiosity rover? Let us know in the comments. Three. We've all heard of a laser, but have you ever heard of a maser? No, seriously. A maser is like a laser, only it shoots a beam of microwaves instead of light. But apologies to Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers movies. Right. They're not really useful for nuking planets. They are, however, good for boosting radio signals. The Mars rover, for example, uses a maser to boost its radio signals back to Earth. They could also make better radio telescopes to detect life on other planets. So a researcher from Imperial College London was excited when he figured out how to make one at room temperature. He fired a laser at a crystal of organic molecules which release microwaves. The microwaves were a hundred million times more powerful than a cold maser. The work appears in the August 15th issue of the journal Nature. Two. Huge bummer for ground-based astronomy. A panel of astronomers assembled by the National Science Foundation, or NSF, has recommended to cut funding for several large radio telescopes. Such telescopes help us see the farthest objects in the cosmos. Two notable casualties are the Green Bank Telescope, the largest steerable dish telescope in the world, and the Very Long Baseline Array, a network of 10 radio dishes centered in New Mexico. The panel says the cuts are needed to cope with a declining NSF budget for astronomy. A statement from the telescope operators reads, the two telescopes provide unparalleled access to the universe. When their information is combined, the instruments provide the highest sensitivity and resolution available for any astronomical instrument. One. Early tomorrow morning, NASA is going to invade Earth's radiation belts with two space probes. The twin satellites, called the Radiation Belt Storm Probes, will circle the Earth and investigate the Van Allen Belt, two donut-shaped bands of high-energy particles trapped by the Earth's magnetic fields. These particles don't really affect us on the ground, but they cause problems for astronauts and spacecraft. Such radiation can beat up DNA and fry satellite electronics. The storm probes will carry out a two-year mission and gather information about the cosmic weather patterns surrounding the Earth. The more we know, the easier it will be to navigate astronauts through the Van Allen belt and on to exotic destinations. That's it for this episode of The Countdown. For links to all of these stories and more, visit scientificamerican.com forward slash the countdown. The link's in the description below. You can also subscribe to the Space Lab channel or watch another video. For Scientific American, I'm Dave Mosher.